All right, hello class. Uh, we're gonna do another video on uh, free fall. Free fall is a special case of how things fall. Um, it's not real, but, uh, but let's, let's talk about it a little bit. So we're gonna go to uh, physicsclassroom.com. We're going to click on physics classroom tutorial. We're gonna click on 1D kinematics. And then we're gonna click on lesson five and we're just gonna start on the introduction because that's a good place to start. So um, here is what free fall is. By definition, a free falling object is an object that is falling under the sole influence of gravity. An object that is being acted upon only by the force of gravity is said to be in a state of free fall. Um, free fall abides by two rules. Um, first off, Free fall is the, like, gravity is the only force, which means there's no air. So do we think that free fall is a real case, like everything falls this way? Well, not on Earth it, they don't. Uh, and it's all about Earth. I mean, honestly, when we talk about free falling objects, we're talking about stuff on Earth, unless I tell you otherwise. Um, so free falling objects neglect air resistance. There is no air resistance. Air doesn't exist, it doesn't affect anything, uh, it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't slow anything down. We just fall. Now, here's why that's important. If there is no air resistance, then there's nothing to stop us from keeping falling until we, you know, make contact with something. So, theoretically, if I'm free falling, and I just keep falling, and keep falling, and keep falling, and keep falling. Because of the acceleration due to gravity, and as long as I don't run into anything, I can actually free fall faster than the speed of light. Now, you would have to fall from a very, 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 very big distance, which is not plausible, but again, we're already getting rid of, we're already getting rid of air, so anything's possible. Um, and then the second part is that there is a uh, specific rate that things accelerate at based upon the gravity and again we're kind of lying to you there too because this is when you're relatively close to earth that things are going to accelerate at this um, due to gravity but free fall says there is no other force and there is only one rate and it does not change that rate never changes so as we accelerate downwards, we're going to accelerate at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. And um, that's what it is. So we keep speeding up until we, until we want to, until we hit something, and uh, we know the rate. So it's constant acceleration. So whenever we're talking about our graphs, this is uh, no curved lines on a velocity time graph yet. We're just constant acceleration. Um, so let's take a look at uh, acceleration due to gravity. Then they, they isolate it a little bit further here. They say, all right, boom, free fall, acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. And it's downward because, you know, the things fall down. Um, we give it a special symbol. This is the first time you're going to see lowercase g. Lowercase g stands for the acceleration due to gravity. That is what g means. Now, there are other larger g's, but... This g, the lower case g, this is the acceleration due to gravity. And so it's 9.8 meters per second squared, and it falls downward. So if we were to uh, calculate some, uh, some times and velocities, you would uh, you notice that, hey, when I drop it, whenever it starts from rest in my hand and I just drop it, uh, things are going to start to pick up speed. It's going to pick up 9.8 meters per second of speed. Um, and then it's going to keep increasing and keep increasing and keep increasing. And you'll notice that as it increases, how much is it increasing by? 9.8 meters per second. Every single second. That's what a meter per second per second means. Now, we're looking at this. That looks good to me, with one exception. And it's not wrong, it's just maybe potentially confusing in the future. What are they saying with velocity? Velocity requires number, unit, and oh, direction. 
what is the direction of the velocity when I drop something? It's down. Yeah. So when it falls uh, down, uh, we can just keep track of that. We can put in here, okay, comma, down. We can put comma, down arrow. We can put, dare I say negative? We can put a negative there. I'm going to tell you, as much as free fall is 9.8 meters of the acceleration due to gravity, it's 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. I'm going to write it more often than not that g is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Because I'm not always just going to drop things. I'm going to throw things because I'm violent like that. I'm going to throw things, and when I throw things, they're going to come back down. So let's say I do throw something. This is why your signs matter. Let's say I wanted to throw something. Let's say I wanted to not just throw something, but fire it off in the air. Because I'm violent like that. Let's say I wanted to fire it off in the air at 10 meters per second. When I release it, as soon as I release it, meaning I'm not holding on to it, I'm just, it's just left my bow. I've just left my bow. What is the acceleration that it is going to experience? Well, if it's free falling, which is pretty much, you know, the name of this video and the entire section that we're talking about, the acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's going to be downward, negative 9.8 meters per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Well, what would be the track of this arrow? Well, it's going to go up, and then it's going to start to, uh, well, it's going to start to come down. And as it comes down, it's going to speed up. Just going to get my handy dandy uh, tennis ball here and yeah, watch this. Uh, goes up and goes down. Goes up, goes down. You should follow. I mean, I'm just, I'm just making this up. You know, there you go. So. As it increases in its height, as it increases at its height, what is happening to the velocity of this? Well, we have velocity that's positive, and we've got acceleration that's negative. And I know that if my velocity is in one direction and my acceleration is in the other direction, um, velocity in one direction, acceleration in the other direction, we're going to slow down. Um, that's how vectors work for us. So vectors, the acceleration, velocity, vectors, they're in opposite directions. So I'm going to get a velocity less than 10. Now I can calculate it. I can use schematic equations. I can say after a certain period of time, if I know enough of my variables, meaning uh, how, how high did it go, meaning the displacement. Um, I know the acceleration already. Um, I can figure out some of that stuff. But just for gravity's sake. We're, we're going to look at this and we're going to say, look, this is less than 10 meters per second. And eventually, it's going to reach its maximum height. And if we're only talking about the velocity vertically, ignore the horizontal. We're not doing horizontal yet. We'll get there. Trust me. Don't tap your brakes. So, if we're just talking about the vertical velocities. How fast is it going at the maximum height? Well, when I throw the ball up in the air, it goes up. As it goes up, it slows down. Believe it or not, it actually stops. And we know that it stops because whenever I draw a velocity time graph,
for something to change directions, I had to go through zero. When I went through the zero, I, well, zero velocity is stopping. So what's the max at the maximum height when it's changing positions, when it's changing directions? Holy crap, it's zero. That's a universal truth that when things free fall and they're thrown in the air, at the maximum height, your velocity is zero. There is no velocity. Because it's changing directions, and velocity time graphs allow us to sort of already know that. So what would the velocity be here? Well, first off, I change direction. So what's the what's the very first thing that I need to know? I need to know that my velocity is now negative. And I'm going to say that my velocity is, and just sort of to make it make sense to you, I'm going to write it in a different way because I I can do that. I can do like this is less than two meters per second, but that that makes it. Mathematically, it's like, ooh, less than that means it's a bigger number. Blah. So I'm going to say that mirroring the other side, the velocity has a magnitude less than 10 meters per second, but is now going down. So we can kind of uh, now go down. At the exact same height, at the original height, we, we can start to think and say, hey, look, how fast was it going at this point? Well, it was going 10. How fast was it going at this point? Well, it's going less than 10. It's slowing down. It's going up. And at this point, it's going zero. At this point, it's going relatively between zero and 10. I mean, based on its distance, not the time it's been there. But at the original height, at the original height, The velocity is going to be equal to the initial velocity. So at this point, so velocity at the original height is going to be the negative of the initial. I'll put V naught, but we'll, we'll swap it over and just sort of for VO's sake. It's going to be the negative of the initial velocity. That's a universal truth. At the same height as it left, it will have the same velocity but in the opposite direction. So at the original height, it will have that. What makes that possible? Well, if I asked you to fill in what's the acceleration, in free fall, isn't it always the same thing? It never changes. It's, it's a classic rule. It's always going to do that. If this is the rate of change of my velocity, if this is how much the velocity changes every second, then this one's going to be the same velocity because it's going to slow down at the, at the one rate, and it's going to speed up at the exact same rate. So there's also another thing that we can say. We can say, well, look, the amount of time that it takes for it to reach the maximum height 
is equal to the time it takes to reach the original height. So this portion's time is equal to this portion's time. So it's half and half the time. It's half and half. For it to reach the original height, it would take twice the length for it to reach the maximum height. We call this portion hang time. Hang time is the amount of time that you're in the air that if you left the ground, let's say I jumped, and you know, on me, um, if I jumped, I wouldn't jump very high, but if I jumped, the amount of time that I'm off the ground would be my hang time. So if I'm leaving from one position and coming back to the same position, I know how long that is. So if I know half of this, like how long it takes to get to here, I can double it to tell you the total amount of time it takes to get to here. Now, here to here is equal to here to here. This is double one of those, okay? This is basically a hang time problem. So if you ever are asked for a hang time, that's what they're talking about. They're saying how long it would take for it to leave the ground, reach the maximum height, and come back to the same original height. Okay, so that's sort of a little catch-all here. Now, it's past the original height. It's past the original height. It's below now. So what can we say about the velocity here? Well, now the velocity has to be greater than 10 meters per second downward. So if that was less, this has got to be more, and it's going to keep getting more, and every second it's going to get faster and faster and faster, and it's going to get a greater and greater and greater displacement. Okay? So we've got maximum height, we've got original height, we've got hang time, and uh, the fact that it's always negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Those are four uh, key rules that you've got to abide by in any specific problem. Um, those are the tricks that they, that they sort of talk about. Um, otherwise, free fall is an example of a kinematic equation problem. And you can do the kinematic equations on anything like this. Um, all right, like I said, uh, uh, if y'all have any questions, again, email me. Um, I, I know that this is probably a little bit longer than the last one. It's probably twice as long as the last one, but, um, it's a little bit more nuanced. So um, y'all have a good day. I'll see y'all when I get back.